Hi, this is Brendan Goley with OC Canine Coaching and America's Television Network. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the science of dog training, how dogs learn, and how you can use these methods to teach your dog some basic training cues and have fun at the same time. All right, to begin, first we have two kinds of conditioning. We have classical conditioning, which you've all heard of Pavlov. He's the father of classical conditioning, or actually it's training by association. So dogs learn very well by associating. It's how they survive for thousands of years. Okay, and the next we have operant conditioning. Operant conditioning revolves a consequence. So let me explain a little bit more about these and how they work. All right, so let's explain a little bit about classical conditioning. Now, like I mentioned before, it's basically learning or training with association or by association. So one example is very simple. It's just your dog's name. You've given your dog food at the very beginning, given lots of praise, and your dog learns it's a positive, so it gives you a lot of attention from that. And that's exactly what we want. A more complex version, or something you may not find so favorable, is how about this? Your dog's afraid of thunderstorms. It hates the sound of thunder. And now it even gets nervous ahead of time because every time there's thunder, you've got rain, you've got wind, you've got all kinds of inclement weather behaviors, and at the very end, you've got thunder. So your dog's even nervous an hour or two before thunder. The last one is simple. Remember when I mentioned the clicker? We're going to use the clicker a little bit later. But the clicker is a, a, a simple association, right? You make the noise, you give the dog food, and now the clicker has a positive charge. Simple as that. All right, now on to operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is actually consequence-based. Okay, so a little different than classical conditioning. Now, there's two options for that. We've got a punisher or an aversive, or we've got something that's like a reward, okay, or something that reinforces the behavior. Now, the first thing, first things are punishers, all right? So we've got positive punishment, and we've got negative punishment. Positive punishment is just adding an aversive. Negative punishment is, is a little tricky. It's actually removing something the dog finds favorable, okay, or, or reinforcing. So an example of each, one, you've got a leash correction, that's your positive punishment. Removing something the dog finds favorable, which is negative punishment, would be something like me taking my treats, walking away, turning my head, lots of little things like that. Those are not fun and dogs will learn just as fast. All right, so now on to reinforcement. Again, we have two kinds. It's positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. Positive reinforcement, we all know, is adding a reward to make the likelihood of the, of the behavior increase. And we have negative reinforcement where we remove something the dog finds aversive or punishing. Something we, uh, I can give you an example of this. For instance, you pull up on the collar and the dog sits. Well, the removal of that tension is the, the, the reinforcer there. So we don't use it very often, but it's just an example there. All right, so we're really trying to avoid using positive punishment here. There's many reasons why. First, it can cause fear, cause anxiety. It does not address the underlying motivation behind the behavior. It can cause learned helplessness, okay? It actually inhibits the learning process, and it can damage the relationship between the handler and the environment you're working in. All right, so now on to four different ways we train, all right? There's luring, targeting, capturing, and shaping. I'm gonna give you some examples and some demos on how you can do this yourself. All right, so luring, the first of these, I'm gonna show you right now. And I'm gonna show you with Kismet, my black lab here, I'm gonna show you how I taught her to go into a sit position and then into a down position. You can do this with your dog at home and see how it works. Kismet, come here. Now, the first thing you wanna do is take a food lure, okay? I'm gonna put it towards her nose and pull up. And her butt should go down. I'm gonna give her the, the reward after that. Now, I also have a clicker, which I've shown you before. And to make it even easier for her, I'm gonna click the second I get what I want, which is the butt touching the ground. Kismet, come here. So head up, but right there, give the food. Now, I want to take her and put her into a down position. I always start from the sit. I keep the food in my hand, right by her nose, and guide her down, and then out. Mm -mm, try again, honey. I know, you're good at it. Down, and then out. Click, feed her the food. If I wanted to keep her down, throw many treats between your legs, and she'd be motivated to stay down. We'll try this one more time, ready? So sit, click, feed. <laughs> down and out and that's as simple as that all right so now we're on the targeting let me show you how i use targeting with my lab here and how fun it is and how useful it is all right kismet 
touch. And what I did there is I've actually conditioned my hand to be the target. So I had this hand on me at all times, just like you do, and I can use it for many, many reasons. The reason I use it for most is recall, which I just demonstrated. And whenever I say touch, she comes running to my hand. It saves dogs' lives. The next is simple. You could have your dog touch your hand at the vet's office and they can give them the shot much easier. There's numerous ways to do this. In fact, I use this for trick training all the time, which is also fun for your dogs. But most often, what you just saw there is how I use it. All right, capturing. It's a little bit different and it's not as used quite as often, but I do, I do find it very useful. In fact, I'm teaching Kismet to blink on cue right now using the very same technique. All right, so let's take a look at how we're doing this. Blink. Good girl. Kismet. So every time she blinks, I'm going to click my clicker, mark it, tell her that's what I wanted, and then reinforce it with food. Come here, sit. Good girl. All right, and then we have shaping. Shaping essentially is breaking up or t capturing s many small behaviors and turning them into a larger behavior. So the one I'm going to show you today is going to place or settling on a mat. She's just the puppies all the time who don't know anything other than a clicker. And well, that's basically it. Let's see if I can teach my dog who knows this very well how to do this by just shaping. Kismet. So I'm going to capture little bits of behavior that I like. She stepped on the mat. Two paws on the mat. Uh -uh. Sits on the mat. Now what I'm looking for in the end here is to lay down on the mat. That's the final result. Uh -uh. Yes, and there it is. And I'm gonna give her lots of treats and jackpot essentially for doing that right there. So she'll do it again next time. Thank you for joining us today. Talking a little about dog training and how dogs learn. And we'll see you again on America's television network. Right, Kizzy? Yes. Good girl.